Okay, so got the floor in there. It is not an easy fit by any stretch of the imagination. Um, which is gonna make it hard to take back out and so on and so forth. So I may have to reconsider and do this in one shot. Uh, you know, basically strip the paint off while it's in position or while it's you know, pretty much sitting where it's eventually gonna be. Um, that's probably easier said than done, but that may be what I have to do or at least plan for that. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but that's probably the simplest way to get it in one time and out. So that being said, I would then need to figure out where all the spot welds go and all that stuff. So I don't know, it may not be possible, we'll see. Um, but I do want to see if I can get it to fit underneath there where it belongs uh, because I do have to modify for the, for the cutouts here for the little tab, the little rib thing I have right here on each side. It looks like it's actually fairly lined up with where the front of that floor area is. So I kind of think worst case scenario, I might be splitting it like right here, but um, which isn't too bad. So, so in the meantime, because of the way it's just kind of sagging and not holding much shape, I'm contemplating putting something under it and picking up in the middle just to kind of get it square while it's sitting on top of the rockers. And then I can try to do my best to mark what needs to be marked. Um, so, and then that being said, I would then probably go on the bottom of the rockers, which I believe I already have well through primer on them and just kind of get those spots somewhat ready if they need any more primer to keep it sealed up. Um, and then I'll have to come along on here and drill all my holes, uh, which again would be kind of a pain in the rectum doing it where it is. Um, so I don't know, I have to, I have to think about this for a minute and uh, see which way it makes the most sense. Um, I do think the back areas probably aren't too bad. I think they'll actually shoehorn in there, but it's definitely tight. So having that back section on there underneath the seat is definitely making it a little more challenging than it probably would be otherwise. Um, so, cause otherwise I would have some forward and back play, but I don't have any cause of the the uh, bent uh, ear right here, it's going to want to pop up against the back of that uh, torque box. So I'm not going to have really any forward and back play. So that's going to make it kind of fun here in a minute, trying to fit it. So okay, um, that's about where it's at now. So I'm going to try to pick it up and see what I can see what I can figure out as far as leveling it and uh, lining things up. Okay, so trying to level it off a little bit just to see what kind of fitment I get out of it. Um, and it looks like if I take a, uh, not really a scissor jack, but one of those like RB levelers I've been using for everything. And I put one of those under there with a two by six. I've got you know, about a three foot long two by six under there supporting both sides of the, of the uh, dry shaft tunnel. And uh, it levels off pretty well when you do that. You can bring it up a little bit, just kind of take some weight off of the middle. Um, and it gets a little easier to maneuver to at least see if, you know, if the dimensions back here are good, you know, between the wheel well and the, and the torque box for the panels to fit down inside it. And it appeared to be pretty much dead nuts on, so I can't complain. Um, and I'm trying to think what else here. The, uh, I've got to figure out what I'm doing with how I'm tying it into the rockers. I don't know whether I want to drill spot weld holes or whether I want to just do uh, little stitch welds all down, the, down the, uh, the length of it. I'm not going to weld it continuous, obviously, because it warped the crap out of it, but... Um, but if I did stitches, you know, little stitch beads, I think it'd be just as strong as if I did spot welds. I don't really see the difference. Um, so I've got to think about that. Uh, the only part that does kind of stink is I have to pull it back out anyway. So I can't really get away with not removing it because I've got to clean the bottom of that firewall across there and get it ready for spot welds. So I really need to come in here probably and mark, I might've got a little premature on this, but I need to mark all the spots across there where I plan on doing the spot welds through onto the firewall. And then same thing back here going to the transition pan. So I've got to, got to mark those spots so then I know when I lay it down that uh, I know where I'm putting those and I can, you know, prep those areas where they're going to receiving the welds. So um, I just finally got some more weld through primer in today. So um, Amazon came through. So yeah, so hopefully I can get some of this stuff done. All right, so I've got the floor in the car, obviously temporarily here. It's not welded at all. Um, I, I, I used the hoist 
to lift up on that strap there to kind of pick it up in the middle um, and then to make it hopefully you know it kind of bowed a little bit down sagged a little bit and I was able to kind of scooch it to the to the left and the right and just kind of like shimmy that piece in there I did have to have to relieve a little bit down in there you know and, and bend that piece up because of that uh, little rib thing I've got in there um, so it's not bad I, it'll it'll work I'll, I'll end up basically bending that piece up or or, or, or cutting it off and just patching it one or the other just to make it sealed up uh, I'm not thrilled on this side because like my the rib at the, or the little uh, uh, flange at the, on the on the floor pan is where it's supposed to be. But then if I go to the front of this, I, if I look through that hole right there, you can see that I only and that because that's technically the front of that of that torque box. I've only got like probably three eighths overlap. So I was really hoping for a full you know inch of overlap there. So initially I was gonna you know put my holes where I thought they would be or put my marks there, and then I realized well nope that's not gonna work because there's nothing under there. So I'm probably gonna have to do stitch welds along the edges, which kind of sucks. But, uh, but it'll, I mean, it'll, it'll do. It's just, you know, it just tells you that, you know, this distance from, from here to here on that torque box, it didn't change, but apparently this thing's cut out a little bit large. So, you know, what are you gonna do? It's aftermarket. Um, and then I went and marked everything along here. So I've got the holes, you know, the dots are where I'm gonna drill the holes and the dashes are where I'm gonna clear from there down to the edge of the metal. And then I'll reapply some uh, welter primer in those areas. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that everything was going to sit down flush. Obviously, it won't lay down all the way with that strap in there right now because uh, it's kind of a thick strap. So when I push it down in the middle, it's going to uh, it's going to push to the edges some. But I, I really need it to. Obviously, as you can tell on this side, I've got a gap there. I've also got a gap on the side, which is probably you know three eighths of a gap or so, three eighths inch maybe. Um, that side's worse. I've got about five eighths. So that tells me those flanges are actually bent up uh, a little too narrow. So I may have to bend that one down over there just to get it to reach and then just I'll just I'll build a little L angle and just put it you know L strip of you know L sheet and I'll run it across there and maybe do the same thing on this side just to you know eliminate the the trouble that I'm going to have with it otherwise so I probably should have just buzzed those off in the beginning and I probably could have you know while the strips back on there later but you know it's being hopeful that it would work so yeah so much for that but uh and then at the front same story so I marked where I'm going to be drilling all the holes in the floor and then you know dashed the little areas where I'm going to clear it uh, of paint to, to get that electric coat paint off of there and then just uh, put some epoxy or some uh, uh, welter primer on there. Um, I stuck the uh, little cross the, the seat platform in there just to make sure that when I go to push up on the bottom of the floor everything actually touches. Uh, I didn't want to get in there and then find out something's funky. Um, overall it seems like it fits pretty well. The, the one forward flange that's located like right there is probably it's a little short of the wall or of the of the uh, rocker so I'm not Real thrilled about that. I'll, I'll try to squeeze it in with vice grips or whatever, but it means tighter at the bottom than the top. But um, but it's probably got an eighth of an inch or so. Whereas the back, I think I, I can get the back to squeeze in probably. Um, but it's just uh, you know not quite super tight there. Um, but anyway, I think I'm I think I'm pretty in pretty good shape overall. I've just got to now struggle to get this thing out of here and then start cleaning all the welds back off again. It just kind of sucks. There's not really an easy way to get out of the car. I was hoping it would go through like the windshield hole, but it's about two inches too wide for that. So I don't see bending it at a, you know, at a 45 or something, or, you know, at the whatever, you know, diagonally, I don't think it's going to go. So unfortunately, I probably got to come back out the way I went in, um, which is, you know, nice and fun. So, um, but while it's out, I may very well take those flanges off uh, on, the, on the back edges there um, just to, try to uh, you know, make my life a little easier going back in. I'll just have to bend a piece of sheet metal put over there when it's done. So, um, but that's a, just a thought. I don't I may or may not do it yet. Uh, I, I can probably cut it while it's in there, but I really probably can't get a die grinder down in there in the back side of that, of that uh, torque box. So if I'm going to do something, I probably just need to do it while it's out. Um, and then worry about, you know, just uh, spot welding the thing back in when, you're, when I'm done. Um, so now underneath the car, I think it's, might have shown this, but I've got one of those scissor jack, you know, or I say scissor jacks, kind of one of those uh, RV levelers with the, with the board on it, just to kind of give a little bit of support in the middle so it doesn't sag down too much. Um, that kind of fought me a little bit when I was using the, the hoist, but um, but it does help, I think, just to keep it from totally, you know, contracting too far down, and then, then you end up with a, uh, um, you know, your sides don't touch right, and you, it kind of makes it hard to measure and know what you're doing. So. Um, I'm not certain on the firewall yet. I'm, one thing I do need to look at a little closer is that 
The firewall obviously has a lot of play in it right now. So the question is, what is the proper position? Um, I don't really have an idea or any real good way of knowing that, I don't think. So what I'm gonna kind of lean with, if the, or what I lean towards doing is, I, I trim these a little more here to get them to clear out, and I'm just gonna rely on this thing being cranked up till it touches the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the rail. Um, it moves up, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not terrible if I stick a knee under there. I can get it you know, to go up, up into place, but um, it's got a lot of play in there. I just don't know what the proper position is. Obviously, if the floor is gonna be welded to the rail, then I, then I need to have that. Uh, firewall coming up there too, but that's going to affect where my spot welds are. So that's why I was, you know, kind of thinking that's, you know, might be a concern. The other thing it would affect is, you know, where these, you know, where the where the you know, the uh, frame rails come in. Got to make sure that angle's not wrong once I do that. So um, that's just a, something else to to look at and think about. Um, so I mean, obviously it'll conform to whatever I make it do at that point since it's only sheet metal. But um, but it would be nice if I knew exactly what height it needed to be at. So. Okay, so here's the setup I was mentioning. I've got the hoist hooked up to the strap, which runs through the uh, gear shift back to the back of the tunnel. And when you pick it up, you can see, and you can see the shape through there, it's, it's, it's dipping down on each side. So it's getting a little bit of slack in the floor and allowing it to move some. So, um, what I'm going to try to do now is just basically shift the floor and just kind of, you know, kind of rock it back out of there. Okay, so you're, you pull one side out and then shift and lift the other side back on top of the rocker as well. Disconnect this and then try to spin the butt end around the you know, rear end this way and try to come out uh, through the wind through the through the door this way. I may just flip it sideways, bring it out to where the door or the the, the, the uh, torque box holes are you know in line with the rock or just kind of bring them over that way. I can work on that end, get it prepped, and then I can try to get in there to clean that up too, um, and then. See what I can do in the front doing that. Unless, I mean, I may pull it all the way out. I'll, I'll wait and see, see what it looks like, see if I have enough room to do anything with it or not. I'll, you know, time to tell here. So, um, let's see.
Getting there. Gonna end up cutting these off anyway, these flanges, just because the more I look at it, it's never gonna pull all that far over there, and I'll be busy fighting it more than it's worth. So I'm better off just chopping these off and then just putting an L angle in there to tie it back to the rocker when I'm done. Because the odds are I'm gonna be filling a gap anyway, or bridging a gap anyway. So it's kind of my thought, at least at this point. So, um, all right. Fortunately, I don't have to do much prep in the car. I really just need to clean up the spots where the uh, where the paint is gonna, or where I have to put the weld through primer. So I could probably hit that with the with the little rotary tool there, uh, just kind of sand them off, and then uh, and then wipe everything down, spray it, let it dry, and then put the floor back in after I get some of these holes drilled in here. So um, unfortunately, I'm running out of room here. I can't really back up any further since I'm already smacking against the table. So I can take it off of the Hoist, but honestly, it's probably easier to go back in with how it's sitting right now. Because I can just go around the other side and get in and drill a hole through to, to clean the holes up. So, just a thought, at least at this point. Um, all right, let me, let me buzz this stupid thing off here. Okay, so I'm picking up with the floor work again today. Um, I stuck the floor back in. I got done painting the seams and putting some holes in it for where my spot welds will be. Currently, I don't have any holes underneath the long runs. I was just planning on trying to do stitch beads along the, along the uh, where the floor touches the, uh, the rocker. So I think it'll work. I don't see any reason why it won't, um, but I'm not really too worried about having the other. Uh, one thing I did notice is when you put the floor in here, obviously it has some sag to it in the middle. It's not incredibly rigid, or it doesn't have a whole lot of rigidity by itself. So um, I put a jack under the middle with like a block of wood going across just to kind of support the middle initially, um, which helped kind of line it up a little bit, get it to you know align where I wanted. And I was able to do a little bit of tweaking of the floor when it was in that position. Uh, but I don't really have enough, these little scissor jack things to do that everywhere. Um, so I did put one under the front end because what I've noticed is the tunnel uh, well, the firewall not being attached on the kick panels will will sag downward. So you have to put uh, a jack or something, some way of propping it up under the front end, like a block of wood going across, and that will allow you to kind of keep that from dipping too low. Um, and then it also gives you a little bit of rigidity for when you go to actually try to conform the tunnel shape to the to the tunnel on the on the firewall. Um, I do think I'm going to have to probably put a block all the way up to the top section, right to like in the middle, 
just to keep that still when I'm pushing down on the on the uh, floor pan to get it uh, to get my uh, tie-ins with my spot welds. Um, it may not be perfect. I may end up having to you know tap it down with a ball peen or something, and uh, or even slitting it and taking a you know, cutting a wedge if I need to get it to form a little better. The back is kind of the same boat, so the tunnel shape of the floor does not completely match the tunnel little entry uh, spot there on the uh, on the transition pan. So and it wants to ride up. So I think the tunnel. I think, the, I think the, the main issue is that the distance from the floor and maybe the angle of the wall is not perfect to the, to the uh, transition pan, so it naturally wants to squirt upward when, you're, when it's on there, kind of slide, makes it slide up. So I have noticed if I get on top of that and stand, or basically put my feet on there and, and press down on there and kind of bounce on it, it will lay down a little more, but it never quite gets to where those top two spot welds would actually be touching the, uh, the, the piece of the panel underneath it. there's still a you know, 16th or more gap under there. So um, it fits well through here, I mean, through the sides and along the bottom seems to fit well when I do that. So probably, in, in, you know, what I'll have to do eventually is either, either hammer those down or slit it and then knock it down and, and weld it and then just you know, weld the, the little slit back up again. So that's kind of where I'm going with it at this point. Um, and as you'll notice, when, when you put it in there without having weight on it, this end here, I mean, it looks close, but it's not quite far enough over, but as you apply pressure in the middle, it pushes that, uh, this, this guy here, that little seam, push, or that little elbow pushes it over the edge of the, uh, of the transition pan into that air gap there. And same thing on the other side. You can, if you, I guess if you can see kind of closely, it's kind of popped up now, but as you put pressure on it, it wants to go down a little further. Uh, so it kind of works a little better that way. Um, so, but I think overall, I'm pretty happy. Um, I do think there's a sequence that you're gonna have to use. So I think you're gonna have to, uh, well, I think, what I'm going to end up doing probably is welding the middle and trying to work my way out from the middle because I certainly don't want to incorporate slack into the system. Um, so if I start if I started at the edges and did them, then I may get some oil canning in the middle of the floor. So I'm thinking if I just you know weld a couple of those on each side of the tunnel and then work my way kind of out from the middle and then maybe go to the front, do the same thing on the other on there and just kind of pull it, you know, keep working my way towards the edges. And then when I'm done, I'll, I'll come underneath the bottom of this thing and uh, up under, you know, where these, where this edge is, and I'll just come and start trying to stitch that together. So I think that'll work. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, taking your time and, and figuring out where you're gonna, where you're gonna hit next and make sure your welders are in the right settings. Because um, that bottom one's gonna be thicker material than it is on this back here. So I can get away with a little more heat on the bottom, on the bottom of the rockers than I can on the actual transition pan or the uh, firewall. So uh, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. And I'm gonna see if I can start getting this thing at least tacked down. All right, this may be a little harder to hear me do while to run, but I do want to show something real quick. So I've got two clamps that I put on the front edge. I put them on the, on the upper uh, tunnel area. So I got two of them which hold down the center two spot welds. But when you do that, you start getting ballooning on the sides. So looking through the hole here, you can see that down at the bottom, it looks like it's conforming pretty well to the shape of the pan or to the floor where your feet would go. And then as you come up the tunnel, it seems pretty good, but then there's slack in the corner and you can see the bubble on the other side as well. So obviously I am gonna to have to slit it. So I'll probably do the, 
top two, and then maybe the next one on the each outside of the uh, clamps, and then I'll have to slit it on each corner just to get it to lay down. Uh, there's just too much material. So um, just something you got to deal with, but uh, should go together. It's just a matter of, of uh, you know, taking out the slack. Okay, so what I'm thinking about here is I've got the welds up to about this area you know, on each side of the tunnel. Uh, because the firewall is a separate piece from the floor, I don't really want to weld it all the way across without having it pulled up against the bottom of the rails. Because if I do, if I, weld, if I weld all those spots on each side, then when I go to push up here, I might cause a buckle in, the, in each corner or may not be able to get it to go up without hammering the crap out of it. So at this point, I'm going to want to start pushing the floor up and tacking that. That's going to be kind of hard to film though, to be honest, so I'll probably just have to skip some of that. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to just push it up, run a little tiny stitch bead, just you know, all those dots connecting it, and then I'll make it longer after I get it just kind of held in place. But I think I'm going to have to do that because I know that will go higher than it is right now, at which point that floor, that firewall is going to have to bend up further. Then I don't think I can get away with going any further than about here before I'm going to have to curl that up there at the end. So. That's kind of where I'm going with it at this point. So uh, we'll see how it works. And then I'm, I'm not going to finish welding all the I'll slip this stuff later. That's kind of boring. And then uh, you obviously finish the spot welds in the back. It's just same old, same old, over and over again, more spot welds. Uh, and then obviously I got to do around the torque boxes as well. Um, that I might do, I'm thinking I might do that now and then do the other later. Or the under the under after it maybe, but I got to think about that because uh, if I weld that up and it's got a gap here, I, I mean I, I, this is easy to get to and hammer down if I need to, but um, I don't know. It's probably six one half dozen the other, so we'll see. Looking at it closer on this side, it does appear that uh, kill the water. Second, so this top portion it does have a gap as you can see. There's a quite the shadow there but it really isn't all that hard to get that to conform. I can push that back down pretty simply. So if I stick vice grips on there, that'll, that'll pull down nice and easy. Um, and that's with a vice grip holding, uh, let's see if we can see it, you know, the edge of that, of that panel where I'm gonna do all the stitches along there. So, so with it held up in place, it gives a little get air gap, but I think it'll be all right. And same thing back here, like this guy here will, will pinch down with just a little pressure on it. So I think I can do the torque box is probably after I get the other portion done is just to get the floor nice and secure in the middle so I can really put my weight on it without bending anything. So that's, uh, that's what we'll try to do.